good evening to all of you yes hello sir hi sir so uh, let me let's get this uh, started okay um yes sir so we're very happy to have you on board uh, so good, good evening to everyone who have joined us right now and um, i'm archish shrivastav a member of the chanakya center of alternate dispute resolution along with me i have shubh gautam a co member of the center and uh, both of us will be the moderators for the session of yours in case of any difficulties during the lecture please feel free to drop us a message in the chat box um further we request you to hold all your questions till the end of the lecture it is a great honor for me to welcome our guest for today mr bheem singh deputy manager arbitration cell power grid even though our speaker needs no introduction i will share with you a small brief about our expert today mr bheem singh uh he is deputy manager arbitration cell power grid mr singh joined power grid as an executive trainee after his training he got posted as assistant manager at power grid's regional headquarters in patna wherein he independently handled cases related to contract arbitrations conciliations insolvency and liquidations ibc labor and statutory compliances electricity laws writ petitions slps title suits injunctions are amongst the ma many other things that he has been dealing with um so we'll be today discussing with us the arbitration emerging trends for dispute resolution so on behalf of the whole team ccadr i welcome you and without taking any more of your time i request you to please take over thank you uh, thank you asan i'm audible to all of you and thank you chadak yes, nasman university for giving me this <coughs> opportunity to uh, share my views on uh, emerging trends for this to reduce them thank you for all this <coughs> so i think we should start with the presentation first and the scheme should be like that in the at the end of the presentation people may ask the question if they are willing so allow me to start with the presentation uh and i'll tell me uh, if that is visible to all of them or not yes sir yes sir it's visible to us very good thank, thank you great uh, <clears throat> see uh, thank you for your uh, for the uh, for this grand introduction um uh, i'm dealing with this arbitration matter since last 6 years i think and uh, now i am posted as you have already told to our listeners our audience our participants that uh, i'm working in a particular cell called arbitration cell in uh, in a psu named power grid corporation uh, i think Uh, a few of them or i i think a few of you must be knowing about power grid what the power grid does and uh, it is one of the maharatna of the government of india engage the business of electricity transmission in the country and all, all around the world where they are required so now <clears throat> i'm working here there's no uh, uh, i mean there's no need to retreat the same again uh relatively very uh, enjoyable session for you and me too because sharing views and exchanging of views with young lawyers is always uh, amazing and fantastic for uh, in the from the perspective of learning uh, for i think i am just just bit suspicious i am audible to all of you or should i enhance the volume of Sir, you are audible. I'm sure, audible. sir. You're audible to all of us. And uh, please, uh, for those who it's not audible, please check your connections at your end. Sir, is audible to us. Great. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> please continue. So, uh, I just just uh, prepared a bit presentation. Even though I, you people must be knowing about the arbitration, still I thought to share a bit of minute uh, on the introduction of the arbitration. <clears throat> so, as you can, uh, if the my presentation is visible to you on the screen. you can find out uh, some bullet points where i try to pick the pick the pick the pointed notes to remind you all as to how the arbitration in india get the german uh as i think just will take two minutes before uh, reaching to practical aspect of the arbitration because as i have been directed and i am informed i need to discuss uh, the practical aspects and trends of the arbitration 
what is the present trend for dispute resolution so before i reach it there i start with the just uh, just just reminding you all how the arbitration has come into picture in india uh, and first the law which was come into picture in 1940 1940 so the basic german has been covered up under section 89 of cpc civil procedure uh, code by amendment in the year 2002 which which actually which officially has declared that the court if the provisions are so can refer parties for adr that is alternate dispute resolution however it is very unfortunate to say that the only the arbitration is the only a preferred adr method which is used in india remaining uh, rest the conciliation judicial settlement and lok adalat and mediation are are not that much prevalent as our arbitration so whenever we refer to section 9 we just it come to our mind that it is only about arbitration so it is initiated to which has been inserted under the regular law because because uh, till 2000 2002 or 2005 you might be uh, perhaps a very less number of cases were being dealt at the arbitration in india even though it was prevalent outside the country but in india it was very less prevalent and people were resorting to the regular uh, laws regular courts set up which were being dealt for under cpc in, in so far the uh, civil side is concerned and for for rpc and crpc so far the criminal side is concerned so arbitration was not for uh, for sight for the people to resolve the their commercial dispute through arbitration but now uh, really <clears throat> it is a, i mean it is you, you must be knowing that it is really arbitration is very helpful so far as time is concerned so far as economy is concerned and informalities are concerned because uh, see uh, in arbitration we had we need not follow the formalities which we need to do compulsorily in the courts so really uh, it is appreciable up front uh, that arbitration is emerging as a big Uh, a big, uh, I mean, uh, is hot spot for dispute resolution system in India, and the government has also started taking uh, care for this. And you can see this from the from the end number of uh, amendment are being uh, being uh, uh, being taken up by the government to streamline the arbitration system in India because it is a now need of time. And government has come to understand that without arbitration, we would not be able. international dispute are concerned so arbitration has paved a way uh, window to work on the international dispute and settle them through arbitration uh, i think the provision for this can also be seen under article 51 uh, of the constitution of india i'm not sure how much this has been read but yes provision was that <coughs> there is no need to say again that uh, indian law is based on ancestral model law of 1985 and we follow the common law practice of uh, conducting arbitration proceedings uh, for timing the only law that governs the arbitration in india is the is the arbitration and conciliation act 1996 read with uh, latest amendment by till 2021 because there have been around, around four to five amendment till 2021 uh it is again would be a uh, i mean just not be required for you but since this is an international uh, international definition for arbitration what does arbitration mean it is mentioned by wipo but uh, i mean those who are studying ipr they must be knowing about the wipo uh, intellectual property word uh, word intellectual property organization which have defined the arbitration <coughs> as a procedure in which a dispute is submitted by agreement of the parties to one or more arbitrator who make a binding decision on the dispute in choosing arbitration the parties opt for a private dispute resolution procedure instead of going to court this is very clear that this is a private dispute resolution mechanism as as far as the wipo is concerned and same thing is also applicable to ancestral model law also and we more or less we follow the same definition in indian indian setup so arbitration is nothing but a, a method for resolving a dispute through private mechanism but where we use the private uh, that means we are 
we are just going away from the formalities of the code in the regular proceeding. Uh, now, uh, I mean, uh, once when you are be asking the question at the end of this presentation, you must be wondering why, why arbitration, why not conciliation, negotiation, mediation, or local dialogue so popular for dispute resolution. This is a, uh, this is uh, this is a question that arises in the mind of all. Uh, but the only the answer that I can get here from the is the more is the ease and enforceability because uh, the other forms of distribution except local dialogue are not that uh, does not have that much binding legal effect. So uh, that's why people may people say that the arbitration is the preferred method in India because of this enforceability and easiness. So now. What challenges we face? I'm just covering up in a bit so that we can come up because I have a lot of presentation uh, and time is around at five. So people must be having one to two hours for this presentation you might have thought of. Now, uh, what I am to cover up is the domestic arbitration. The uh, international commercial arbitration, so far this concern, it is settled. It is a bit settled because if the seat is clear, where the seat is, now you have to see which convention applicable New York or Geneva, then then the matter is not that disputable. So far, international arbitration is concerned. Issues that we are facing, the challenges that we need to tackle is in, in the field of domestic arbitration. Because in all the time we have we, we are facing multiple types of disputes. Sometimes we do not we, we are not able to find out wh which, what should be the seat, what is the difference in seat in venue. We are still struggling, and moreover, the setup that we have, the infrastructure we have, is only uh, is only uh, good for regular setup, regular court setup proceeding. It's not that much helpful for informal court proceeding, yeah, outside court proceeding, yeah, dispute resolution settlement outside of the outside the court. So there are higher challenges. Moreover, uh, the judicial system. Uh, I'm not commenting on anything, uh, but uh, uh, it is observation, just observation, that so far lower judiciary is concerned. A bit, there's a bit issue so far domestic arbitration matters are concerned. So we do not have that much liberty, infrastructure, awareness, and uh, and and the settled law to come up uh, for with a conclusion that for this particular type of dispute. We should have this type of resolution. For now, in my short uh, span of my job, six to seven years, I have come across with the multiple uh, issues, challenges that we as a PSU, since I'm working in a power, a power sector undertaking, that is called power sector undertaking, and it's also called public sector undertaking, that PSU is a Maharatna government of India undertaking. What I have realized in my six to seven years of service, that what we as a PSU, what we, we, we face the challenges, what types of challenges we face. Uh, the out of, out of one, first is fee schedule structure for dark arbitration. Uh, you might be knowing those who have studied arbitration. There are two ways of conducting arbitration. One is ad hoc, another is institutional arbitration. In institutional arbitration, generally, we, we have an institution like uh, DIAC, Delhi Institute of Arbitration Center under the edges of Delhi High Court and Hyderabad, Bombay, generally we have. Uh, and that is called institutional arbitration. So the rules of High Court rules are binding on them. Uh, them. But so far, ad hoc arbitration is concerned. It is a bit open challenge because in ad hoc arbitration, party autonomy is the is the more is the more significant. Which decide the, the decide the forum, which decide the people, which decide the arbitrator. So the major issue of fee is in the field of ad hoc arbitration. That we as a PSU, we as a corporate have to face on uh, time and again. The second challenge that I understand the recourse to Article 226, 227 of the Court Intervention. Now it is uh, we what we do. In case we, once the tribunal has been constituted, we find that this is not the order is not going to be challenged under Article 34 or 37 
which is a viable mechanism under the act then we simply take the recourse to article 227 for the court intervention in the high court uh, again see the scheme of the sec arbitration and conciliation act you will see the section 5 explicitly says that this is, is non stantic law that the minimum minimal judicial intervention but again uh, just because of lack of awareness just because of lack of infrastructure and settled law uh, we we end up with a petition under article 227 of the constitution the third challenge that we face is the dispute and uh, referral of dispute and appointment of arbitrator by courts and domestic arbitration section 8 and 11 of arbitration and conciliation act 1996 this is again a challenge because uh, our a number of a bit number of cases have come out that um, even after amendment that uh, the arbitrator that should not be unilateral appointment the arbitrator should be independent this would follow the rules procedure the arbitration are subject to agreement but still we think uh, there is big gap even uh, a just a judgment called perkins has uh, decided that there could not be unilateral appointment but we don't follow this in a, in a in a true sense section 34 arbitration conciliation act and on that note a public policy is umbrella for challenge every award is being challenged under 34 and the major reality is this that 34 is a class class that simply means either the award is set aside or upheld so in case of genuine claims are being suppose there are 10 claims and they 10 things have been awarded under claim under particular award 10 claims have been awarded out of 10 three are being liable to be set aside under 34 and rest are not to be set aside but the scheme of 34 is very clear either you have to set aside the award or to uphold the award our supreme court is nulling over and there are um, uh, there are various judgments which has modified and amended the arbitrator award instead of setting aside but it still is a disputable and very challengeable ha arbitration and moratorium under ivc 2016 uh, is a new uh, is a new problem after 2016 because once you you get the moratorium your claims and counter claim so far if you are a claimant that's fine if you are a respondent it's very difficult to enforce your right till the moratorium is over again this is an issue arbitration and commercial court sets there's a dichotomy because of the commercial court sets is the picture but setup is not there they are not functional functional setup the required infrastructure required Uh, go through is not there so the again issue and arbitration and msmes act now, now the government is focusing on msmes the act itself provide for arbitration clauses with a time bound manner so there are some areas that i have discovered that these are these, these pose the challenges for domestic arbitration in the country this, this is now the just list there are no, n number of issues but what i come to understand what i feel these are some of the uh, areas which need to be focused at the earliest out of them i will i, I keeping in mind the time for you i'll dealing with the three of three areas first is fee structure uh those who have been interested in arbitration they must have gone through or heard about owen gc versus upcon ganesha joint venture uh, judgment delivered on 30th august 2022 by our supreme court of india uh fee schedule structures are somewhat have been covered this is this is going to be a panacea in the field of arbitration deciding the fee schedule because so far as the fee schedule is concerned it was it was really open for all them because the gatri jhansi and chai versus gatri jhansi has opened a wider view and got challenged under uh, uh, in the supreme court so now we are struggling so far uh, institutional arbitration is concerned there was no issue at all because in institutional arbitration you have the mechanism you have the set rules up under high court and uh, and the parties have to follow the same but in in the hawk arbitration it was a it was a open challenge because at any moment of time arbitrator can enhance the fee and you being the party to the dispute, uh, dispute and having apprehension that the, that if you oppose the fee structure then the tribunal may prejudice and pass award against you So you are not going to put this. So this has given a liberty to the arbitrators to fix any any number any uh, amount of fee 
or revise or modify its own uh, own orders and enhance the fee. Those who are opposing, uh, they have to suffer. And some of this, so this was the bigger issue, which have been settled a bit now. Now, uh, I just wanted to uh, is just wanted to show you the judgment. Justice Chan Chun, who is your, uh, I mean, um, it's uh, it's upcoming Chief Justice of the country, uh, has written a very well, very well judgment, Justice Chan Chun. Uh, however, there was dissenting opinion also. Uh, Justice Sanjeev Khanna had given a dissenting opinion on this judgment, but for a very limited scope, so far as some indisputable concern. So this was judgment, uh, 200 pages. So I, I just taking you out uh, at the, what the outcome was that, that is 158 page, para number 158, repeat para 1991001011021023, which are uh, important for you and those who are interested. So these are number of cases have been merged about, several number of appeals have been merged, those who have, those which have appeared, uh, were emerged from the, or, for the differing order passed by the high court. Uh, the outcome of this been that, that uh, I'm just taking you out to the main, um, I mean, the main uh, fractum of this judgment because it would not be possible for all of us. Since I have to go through because I am in the field, but uh, uh, in the this time, we cannot uh, go through with facts of the case. I'm just bringing you out the, what the outcome of the judgment. Justice Chen Jun has written very, uh, very sweet, and I mean, uh, it's, uh, coming to page number one. Yes, uh, we are just up to the conclusion finding. Uh, the judgment has been written by Justice Chen Chung. Uh, he has just said, uh, there were actually before uh, I start with the conclusion of the judgment. I must tell you that so far fee is concerned, there were multiple issues were going on. One was of unilaterally determination, unilateral determination of fee. The same, whether force rule is binding in nature or uh, I mean, it's, it's discretionary in nature. Can you, you whether you are bound by the sort of uh, schedule four or it's only a guiding? These issues are going on. And what about when the arbitral tribunal changes its own course and uh, and divides the fees later on at the primary stage of hearing, he decides something else. And at the middle of the hearing, he decides something else. So this is, uh, this is uh, after that, uh, the fact was uh, here, I'm just bringing you to the conclusion uh, and I'm citing this so that you must uh, must be uh, understanding. Arbitrators do not have the power to unilaterally issue binding and enforceable orders determining their own fees. So now the principle of natural justice has come into picture. Earlier, what's happening? I have told you that tribunal takes over the role of uh, uh, parties and decide the fees of its own, even though the act says that that the agreement, the arbitration is solely, uh, the arbitration it solely is based on the party's autonomy. Parties are the king who decides what the fee should be, what the fee should be. But this is only in black and white. This is not in practice. Generally, what happens once the tribunal is constituted, the role of parties, the role of uh, tribunal becomes one. And whatever the tribunal decides, party has to follow because of the uh, apprehension of being prejudiced, apprehension of being uh, uh, apprehension of being terminal, being prejudiced or biased. Uh, Justice Chanchur has written very unequivocally that a unilateral determination of fees violates the principles of party autonomy and the doctrine of the prohibition of in rem suam decision. That is, the arbitrator cannot be judge of their own private claim against the parties regarding their remuneration. <clears throat> However, the tribunal has to discussion to apportion the cost, including arbitrator's fees and expenses. 
between the party in terms of section 31 a and section 31 a of arbitration and also demand a deposit so uh, so now uh, so now uh, it has been clarified by this honorable supreme court that terminal cannot of its own unilaterally decide the fee because he can because the terminal cannot be judged in its own case uh, the only th uh, only thing is that uh, that uh, 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 that if they have any issue, they can approach to the court under Section 391, which is a, just a just a way out for the parties to approach to the court in case they find that uh, the fees demanded by the operator, if it is believed that fees are unreasonable under Section 392. Sometimes it may happen that the fee uh, fixed by the parties is more less is is lesser than what is expected or what is given under Section uh, Schedule 4. The another issue, uh, see, uh, now I, I still am in the fee structure. So what have done, uh, the court, the Honorable Supreme Court has just said, so for institutional arbitration concerned, there is no dispute regarding fee because they have to follow court schedule. They generally follow the court schedule or the rules made by the High Court. So there is no issue. But the irony is that the setup and infrastructure, because the institutional arbitration center are very less in the country, and very less pop and are and, and are very less popular among the stakeholders. So uh, as a as a easier as easier method, we approached to hoc, approached for a hoc arbitration. And schedule four does not apply in total for a hoc arbitration because this is again party autonomy. If party wants that we want to pay a fee which is higher than the than the prescribed under schedule four. So uh, then again for issue, because even though there's schedule four, it's still a hoc operator can ask for higher fees. And the and the uh, issue was that uh, that one party which feels that uh, we need to take the care of operator, he agrees. But the other party, suppose uh, somebody is a uh, government sector or PSU, they have to struggle because they cannot uh, enhance the fee of its own. And there are some CAG audit and all that because they have they are responsible. So now what they have done, the Honorable Supreme Court under this judgment by overruling the Jhansi uh, versus uh, uh, Gatri Jhansi uh, 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 and uh, decided by overruling the Gatri Jhansi taken care of that. See uh, where the fee has been fixed. I'm just taking about, talking about the ad hoc arbitration. Uh, but this judgment, the Supreme Court says that in case the arbitration fee has been fixed by the party before referral, suppose uh, there is a dispute which has emerged between the parties and they want to refer the dispute to the arbitrator, they can agree on a particular fee and then they ask the tribunal, the yeah, arbitrator, that if you are interested, you can enter into arbitration. And if the tribunal accepts the fee structure, then he cannot later on change the fee structure without consent of the party. This is the first case. And second case is that in cases where the fee has not been fixed by the party, suppose there is a dispute and the uh, dispute has gone up. Now we do not have any agreement as to what would be the fees. And the terminal is also do not have the fees. Then force is the uh, it, it comes into picture and becomes the deciding factor. So now what they do? Well, there are no fees fixed by the party. The terminal cannot charge more than thirty lakh plus twenty five percent. That comes around uh, seven point five lakh if it is sole arbitrator in a particular dispute. So maximum fees, the maximum cap of fee has been fixed by the judgment that. Uh, before that, I I am just telling you 37.5 lakh. It was some in some of the cases it was around one crore for arbitrator, 70 crore because this was this was open for arbitration. They were the king to decide the fee. So now the maximum fee cap has been settled through this judgment that the maximum fee can be 37.5 only, 30 lakh plus 25 percent. That comes around 37.5. It's respect to of amount of the claim. So this is again, uh, this is the thing that has been done uh, in respect of fee structure is concerned. 
again the word sum in dispute the schedule 4 simply says the sum in dispute but uh, what happens that if a party files a claim and a other party files a counter claim then the terminal says we will since there are two cases your counter claim as per cpc is a separate suit so since these are two separate suits therefore we will charge separately so um, yes uh, this aspect has not been covered up with this event and they simply said that the counter claim and claim are separate and terminal are free to decide the fee and counter claim also here just sanjeev khanna who is dissenting in this judgment has expressed his view and said that whenever we say the summary dispute it also cover up the uh, i mean uh, is also cover up the counter claim so therefore suppose a claim uh, there is a claim for 500 crore and there is a counter claim for 300 crore by the opposite party in both the cases the maximum fee can can be 37.5 lakh as per Justice Sanjeev Khanna, who is descending in the judgment. But uh, as per Justice Chanchun and uh, Justice Sur Prakash, uh, the fee would be 75 lakhs because counter claim is a separate suit. So this is the only difference that uh, has been uh, in particular judgment. Still, we are happy because the 37 point, uh, 75 lakhs rupees is not a, that big amount because earlier it would have been around 2 crore and 3 crore for settlement of dispute. Uh, yes, I have just directed uh 30 lakh plus 25 percent that i have told you and <clears throat> now uh let's uh i'm just again bring you to the uh main presentation uh actually i have summarized in the uh, in the presentation itself uh I think this this have, we have covered. So uh, fee the the issue the challenge that we were facing is about fee structure, which has been almost set, uh, barring few exceptions, which are to be covered up by honorable high courts in time to come in case to case basis. So almost certain now. Uh, so far as fee is concerned, we need not look into dispute, and we just simply want to uh, defer dispute for arbitration. The fee structure. Uh, can be taken care of by the honorable uh, honorable courts in the country. <clears throat> yes. Uh, now we would be going by the uh, second issue, second challenge that we are facing. Is there a recourse to Article 226 and 227? Uh, I just uh, told you in the beginning of my presentation that is a very easier method. Nowadays, because um, uh, if you have uh, if you have read the i mean you must have read this uh the arbitration and consideration act you will find there are three or four ways only to approach to the court uh out of them uh, one is the uh, one is a uh, mechanism for uh, uh for arbitration is section 9 then you come to section 17 this is not something which i'm talking about i'm just talking about once the arbitration proceeding has commenced there are three or four options available with you to approach to the court because section five of the arbitration consideration itself says uh just give me a moment please uh this i think uh, didn't call give me more just just a minute Uh, really sorry uh, for breaking you out. <coughs> uh, Anchal, uh, do we have session for question answers after the presentation or? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We do have a session for question answers. Uh, so give me a call once you think that we are running out of time. So give me just a. Uh, sure, sir. Sure, right? sir. Yes. Sir. I'm not aware of as to how much time it will take because once you are in the course, 
you forget the reports <laughs> so i'll reserve at least 7 to 8 minutes for question answers great thank you so um, uh, so uh, now is presentation is visible to you all of you presentation is visible yes sir yes oh, sir it is great 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 so uh, now i was telling that uh, article 227 is the easiest uh, recourse that the parties take while we start the proceeding in order to delay the arbitration proceeding is one of people say it was one of the strategy because uh, the act has after multiple amendments in 15 in 19 21 has covered up many of the lacunas under the act and has made this a uh, time bound manner to 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 take care of the delay but still uh, still the advocates are so uh, so high in the profession that they found out the way so 227 is the easiest way to take uh, take the proceeding delayed stays by asking for intervention judicial intervention even though there is clear cut provision under section 5 of arbitration and conciliation act still we find out the way now another act what i come to understand that the only way was the arbitration has commenced you have to wait till 34 or have to come on 37 or 39 so since 37 the scope of 37 is very limited that you can challenge only 30, uh, order passed under section 16 and 17 so rest of the order you cannot suppose uh, you want a uh, arbitrator to remove on the ground of being de jure incapable under section 14 1 of the arbitration and conciliation act you don't have any mechanism but to go to the court so we we uh, as a litigant we as a advocate what we said to client that you think that the mr arbitrator is not going by the procedure and you have a presumption that mr ba mr arbitrator would not be deciding the case in our favor then you can simply go to uh, high court under article 227 uh high court has been uh, generous in the beginning because high court thought that arbitrator are not doing their duty well very well so uh, but now the law has this was a practice being used in a malefied manner now supreme court had taken care of multiple cases uh, i'm just bringing you to the uh, to the recent judgment under which supreme court or the supreme court had decided that yes the courts having superintendence over the tribunals under article 227 has all that authority to intervene in arbitration proceeding but what should be the grounds where where to interfere so the area where to interfere has been taken up it is start with the deep industries case uh, the honor supreme court object that interference under article 227 should be restricted to what order that are passed which are patently lacking in inherent jurisdiction just as nariman uh, judgment uh, i'm just opening this judgment for you all of you uh, you must you, you all should go through this it's a very nice judgment and for the first time uh, some limitations has been imposed for the first time under in deep industries uh, honorable uh, supreme court had laid down certain parameters as to what should be the uh, limitation what should be the grounds under this 227 should be the course take, uh, to be taken as a course and honorable uh, justice nariman had decided <coughs> that the uh, that the only area which need to be uh, which need to be uh, uh, taken care of by by approaching to anwar high court under article 27 is the lack of inherent jurisdiction you if you find uh, i'm just bring you out to the main um, because the judgment is of i think 25 pages so i'm just taking you to the main uh, deliberation
see uh, uh, before uh, before I, we start with the deep industry uh, you people must be knowing about the sdp company versus patel engineering you must have heard about this was a case uh, which have decided uh, whether uh, whether um, uh, order passed under 116 by the honor chief justice is judicial in nature or administrative in nature and uh, this has also opened the uh, era of uh, judicial review before referring the dispute to arbitration so uh, section 45 has been quoted uh, for this case uh, case from uh, sdp company which i read out it is seen that some high courts have proceeded on the basis that any order passed by an after terminal during arbitration would be capable of being challenged under article 226 or 227 we see no warrant for such an approach section 37 makes certain orders of the after terminal appealable under section 34 the aggrieved party has to as a menu for ventilating his grievances against the award including any in between order that might have been passed by the after terminal acting under section 16 <clears throat> it simply said uh, this was simply saying that so far as the uh, remedy is available under section 37 you cannot come to uh, high court under article 227 <clears throat> and um, the very the, what they have said the object of minimizing judicial intervention while the matter is in the process of being updated upon will certainly be defeated if the high court could be opposed under article 227 Or under Article 226 of the Constitution, uh, therefore it is necessary to indicate that once the arbitration has commenced, in the arbitral tribunal parties have to wait until the award is pronounced, unless of course a right of appeal is available to them under Article 7 of the Court. This was the view that was expressed uh, earlier in the SPP versus uh, Company versus Patel Engineering. <coughs> uh, this court. Uh, so now. Uh, Since uh, it will take too much time, I'm just just referring to the uh, the judgment and the findings that uh, what uh, what the crux is that the honor supreme court that interference under Article 227 should be restricted to orders that are passed which are patently lacking in inherent jurisdiction. Suppose anything is done by the tribunal which has not been the subject matter of dispute or has exceeded the jurisdiction, that simply can be approached. even though this is not covered under article but this should not be covered under section 16 otherwise you should have to come under uh, section 37 so for the first time uh, honorable supreme court has put a limitation that what could be the ground for challenging under art, uh, under article 227 this was uh, followed by imta court the supreme court held that in the punjab state power case uh, we, we know it is a punjab state power case famously known as imta court the supreme court held that of uh, that the for to read petition from a section 16 application being dismissed by the arbitrator can only be if the order passed is so perverse that the only possible conclusion is that there is a patent lack of inherent jurisdiction a patent lack of inherent jurisdiction requires no argument whatsoever it must be the perversity of the order that must state uh, stir on one of the, one on the in the face so now again uh, we think that started with the patently lacking in jurisdiction has come till up till uh, uh, it have till come till that it must be the perversity of the order that must stir one in the face i mean just it's a subject to uh, subject to definition i don't know whatever it is but now they again have clarified uh, now the saga has been finally concluded in bhavan construction case it was passed in the year 2021 the court observed at paragraph 17 that the power uh, that the power under article 227 needs to be exercised in exceptional rare wherein one party is left remediless under the statute or a clear bad faith shown by one of the party so now the only available grounds for challenge under article 227 by end of 2022 we find that there are only two grounds now first there must be a ground that i am remediless there is no remedy available under the act so the only this point to be considered and second is bad faith shown by the by one of the party this is again a subject to line i don't know what would be the implication of this line but so far as 227 dispute is concerned regarding uh, yeah i mean just can interplay between section 5 of arbitration and conciliation act and article 227 of the constitution has been settled so far as arbitration proceedings are concerned and their challenge nature of challenge is concerned now you can now 
now a party cannot directly go and ask the uh, high court that uh, my lord kindly interfere because the terminal is going to pass order against me the party must in all probability have to show a case that is a case of remedilessness or a case of bad faith if they fail to prove that this was not the case then uh, then in all probability high court would not entertain the petition on the article 2 petition so now this is somewhat this is settled ha third uh, third line of uh, dispute uh, third line of challenge that i was uh, talking about is the appointment of arbitrator by courts and domestic arbitration this again again a big mess a uh, scope of inquiry by the court under section 8 and 116 of the arbitration consideration act while referring the dispute for arbitration has been narrowed down by amendment which was earlier allowed by the ibp company versus patel engine earlier uh, if you have people you people have gone through uh, uh, the section 8 referral cases and 116 you will find that there was there was there was a huge arena where the court can interfere even though you have a genuine dispute still the court was not willing uh, to uh, to refer the dispute for arbitration even though you have a you have the uh, you have the agreement now this this the uh, the uh, the sbpn company was such a uh, good law that uh, that no court was going want to go above the sbpn company because it has sbpn company has open uh, uh, the way for uh, for judicial inquiry because uh, they have to see reasonableness uh, limitations existence of dispute all factors were being looked after by the court before referring this to arbitration and this was just because of icpn company however by amendment in the year 2015 the uh, the government has brought to the notice that the court the power of court under section 116 is limited to the extent that a party approaches to the court for appointment of arbitrator he must appoint the arbitrator only thing that is available under section 8 because 116 are to be read by under section 8 read by section 8 is to look into whether prime facie there was a case or not if prime facie there was no dispute in existence then the then court will not waste time and reject the application for appointment of arbitrator otherwise otherwise court has to appoint an arbitrator if the party come for uh, uh, comes asking for the appointment of arbitrator <coughs> so the the area that have been lost by the sbpn company has been narrowed down by amendment and again court cannot uh, court is always uh, king and they start with an activism and all that now they again have started uh, trying upon section 8 and 11 and they started sizing whether we can check out or not the validity of the dispute the validity of the agreement the limitation clause and all that ha uh, again uh, There's a there's a very famous judgment called Vidya Drolia. Uh, the court should what have happened in the judgment. Uh, I will just uh, uh, speak out. The court should refer a matter if the validity of an arbitration agreement cannot be determined on a prior facie basis. It la- laid down above. When in doubt, to refer. I mean, just court is now again touching the uh, scope of referral, but still they are what they are showing in case of doubt. When do I, when in doubt, do refer. so uh, justice uh, i mean justice indu banerji i think uh, uh, has delivered a very nice statement uh, i'm just opening this link if it's available there uh it is just a note i think that is available with me uh i'm just reading out for you people because uh, i'm not sure this would be visual or not uh, <clears throat> what have been written the court at the refresh stage can interfere only, i'm just reading out the bold bold line which have been bold the court at the refresh stage can interfere only when it is a manifest that the claims are ex facie time barred and dead or there is no subsisting dispute All other cases should be referred to the arbitral tribunal for decision on merit. 
this is the change have been, that have been brought out by the amendment in section 8 in the year 2015 which have actually been nullified by sbp in company of state engineering uh this was further uh hell in case of bsnl versus nortel uh, telecommunication limited uh what have said the <coughs> Rarely, as a demur, the court may interfere at section eight or eleven stage when it is manifestly and expressly certain that the arbitration agreement is non-existent, invalid, or the dispute of non-arbitrable. Uh, but this is only limited now that is available. आपको लगता है कि at the beginning कि नहीं यार ये चीज तो है ही नहीं, exist नहीं करती है. The application itself is a malafide. Application does not have anything to do with the dispute. तभी आप कर सकते हो. Uh, <coughs> Just uh, and I, in a, I'm just reading out the second para, written that analyzing the above paragraph of Vidya Drolia, Justice Indu Malhotra, in the case of BSNL versus Nortel Network Private Limited, uh, decided in to, uh, March 2021, observed paragraph 37 that it must be understood clearly that Vidya Drolia has not restructured the pre-amendment position. Ah. Uh, on the scope of power of as held in sbp and company versus petrol engineering now it is only in the in the very limited category of cases where there is not even a vestige of doubt that the claim of expressly time barred or that the dispute is non uh, non arbitrable that there that the court may decline to make the references however if there is even the slightest doubt the rule is to refer the dispute to arbitration Otherwise, it would impose upon what is essentially a matter to be determined by the tribunal. So now, a position has been restored uh, that the function of court is limited to the extent to the referral, except prime facie checking out whether there is dispute existence or not existing. One more development of uh, uh, perhaps uh, you people uh, might have been. Uh, i'm not talking about the nature of the eleventh sect i'm just talking about it's, it's no doubt the judicial in nature uh the functions are judicial in nature there's no doubt uh have you thought about that the time limit given for appointment of order is 30 days once the party fails to appoint the arbitrator in the 30 days then other party can approach the court under 116 and request the tribunal to appoint an arbitrator the case card data switch gears the issue uh, what happened is there that a person uh, that a party has failed to appoint its arbitrator within 30 days from the date of request received from uh, received from the contractor but what happened the uh, the other party has also not uh, approved to the court and uh, it has been around uh, around 3 months have passed then suddenly he found that uh, the party to whom the request was made and was bound to appoint the arbitrator within 30 days from the date of request has appointed an arbitrator now data switch gets reached to the court on its court and said that sir the time has elapsed because as per the scheme of that only 30 days have, uh, only if the party fails to appoint arbitrator within 30 days then it should compulsorily be appointed under article uh, under section 116 by the court what happened uh, is it, uh, uh, what happened uh, the court was of the view see uh, the time length prescribed under section 11 is for whole section 116 itself does not spot any time limit and so far as arbitrator appointment is concerned the time is available not till the not for 30 days but has been extended till the date of application is made suppose uh, since uh, the party has failed to appoint the arbitrator on uh, within 30 days of uh, after uh, request of given by the other party it doesn't mean that he his rights have been barred the right to appoint arbitrator only bars when the other party makes an application so effectively what happens that 30 days plus time of filing application for appointment arbitrator is given so this is the uh, this is a new area uh, that uh, that has been uh, a issue 
in recent uh, one of the recent judgment called deep trading company versus iushian uh, just decided 9th of november uh, september so now the law is very simple that in, even in cases where the party has failed to appoint an arbitrator within 30 days still he can appoint an arbitrator provided that other party has not reported a court till that so uh, these are certain issues that uh, i think in a in our that could have been covered so we are well within time uh anjali if you permit uh, if you think we can yes so yes so we are ready for the question answers round now um so i would like to again thank you sir uh, for the wonderful presentation and uh, if uh, we are ready for the question and answers round now we request you to drop them in the chat box and i will read them out to sir so by the time i believe we have one question already it's a fact based question asked by uh, prachi okay she says that sir could you please tell me the evidence that needs to be presented or who would be called for cross examination and there are facts from the claimant respondent as well as the dispute i'm going to retype it here for those who missed it uh achal can you uh, repeat the question i think i could not hear your words it's a long yes, question yes sir uh so it's a it's a case based question okay tell me uh it says that uh, the claimant were algo france algo france is a subsidiary of french telecommunication okay cognomerate responsible for theoretical research in the field of mathematics and computer uh, chip design algo france has a portfolio for 100 plus patent protecting profound inventions that involve original applications of higher mathematics to computer security that is about claimant the respondent now rsa data security the rsa data security is a leading computer encryption firm the source of the competitive advantage lies mainly in the product based on rivest shamir arleman algorithm which is used for encryption and decryption of electronic messages rsa yes i believe so the it's a it's a fact based question and not answerable see, uh, yes sir i would move on to the next question you can just ask to put a fact based question but it yes. should be very direct uh, prachi could you please concise your question and ask again uh, thank you sir uh, gorus singh asks that how do you think arbitration can be useful in international trade disputes considering maritime laws which put the poorer nation at risk due to the non availability of food via the waterways oh okay uh so if she has been in the presentation she must be saying that so far international arbitration is concerned very certain because we have mechanism we have infrastructure we have availability once you have settled a clause under a dispute that the seat is arbitration in singapore new york wherever that may be so law is very clear so there are no issue uh, and though particularly you ask me i mean just i what i have heard is maritime law you are asking question regarding maritime law i mean i am not aware of what is the situation there but so far is dispute is concerned which is in international nature there are no difficulty in deciding uh, but for sure i am not aware of कि कैसे होता है वो आप मुझे मैं मुझे नहीं uh that's all right sir so the next question comes from saksham tiwari who says that sir what's your take on unethical issues in case of commercial arbitration uh yes um see uh, uh, i'm not i should not comment on that see uh, every uh, law every proceeding has some drawbacks right if you go by the court you will find there are multiple um, mal malpractice going on right you will find that uh, things are not going as per your expectation or as per the law but that happens similarly uh, in arbitration also because uh, this have this cannot be said that arbitration is free from uh, ethical issues there are some ethical issues but still this is an informal platform where you have you have did not worry about the result you have other mechanism to take care of
Uh, so there is a question about uh, Gayatri judgment. It says that is the Gayatri judgment overruled by the ONGC versus Afghans? Uh, yes, overruled is not a good term. It can be taken care of by uh, ONGC versus Afghans because the facts are different from those which have been decided in Afghans. But fee structure has been set up. So have been taken care of would be the good word. Uh, so Mayank Kumar asks that, sir, can you please give us some examples of circumstances in which the courts may allow intervention under Article 226 and 227? The tests in deep industries, EMTA coal, uh, Bhavan construction seems to be vaguely worded. Can you yes. give some examples on the same by citing some practical instances? Uh, yes, uh, see what happened. Uh, I'm just citing an example from my own um, own case, we as a PSU, uh, since I'm working in a power grid corporation, uh, we have a dispute with contractor and it was, uh, we have multiple disputes, around 10 to 12 disputes. We, all the disputes, we have a arbitration clause. Uh, but due to some issues, it was decided by the management that let's, let's all get them together so that we could uh, save the money and time. In that way, we brought all the around five disputes we brought together in uh, within the ambit of one terminal, and terminal happily decided uh, accepted the reference. The issue was that that before we brought the five matters uh, for one terminal, it was going on before five historical terminals individually. So when uh, the matter came to the uh, new terminal, the terminal didn't say anything about the status of the arbitration and what we were expecting that see uh, since the tribunal since the matter was already going on before the actual tribunal therefore the matter should be proceeded from that play uh, from the stage where the matter was going on before the actual tribunal before this tribunal but what happened actually the contractor has revised this uh, revised his claim uh, in multiple so, so see, suppose uh, the earlier the claim was for 50 crore, now he has make it a 500 crore. So it was around 2000 crore rupees has enhanced by him before the new tribunal, citing that that the claims uh, that were been filed, this is a uh, this is a fresh proceeding for the tribunal, not a continuation of proceeding. It was a uh, some uh, dispute under section 15.2 and 30, 32. So termination of proceeding and termination of mandate. There was a dispute. We requested to tribunal, sir, uh, see, uh, as per agreement between the party, the dispute were to be conjoined together in order to show money and time. And also the also the uh, clause was there that the proceedings should be carried forward from the same state where they have been left out before, uh, from the state tribunal. Now, uh, just enhancing the claim from 50 crore to 500 crore will not be any addition. See, uh, claimant have all the right to amend the uh, claims in any time of the dispute, but he cannot revive the claim without any justification. But terminal says, see, I don't know about Istra terminal's status, so now I'm treating them as a fresh claim. And as a fresh claim, he is uh, he have all the authority to file of any amount of claim. Since proceeding has been commenced, we approach to the Honorable Delhi High Court. We get an STN article 227 because this order. That tribunal was saying, I cannot allow a per, uh, the claimant to put the same uh, claim which have been put before the actual terminal. So this was the order which cannot be challenged under Article 37 or any other provision of the site. So this was the example that I'm citing from for 226. Thank you so much, sir. I believe that will be the end of the question answer round because we are a uh, time bound here. And I would like to call my co-member Shub for the vote of thanks, please. Shub. Hi, Achal. Can you please confirm if I'm audible and clear? Yes, sure. Thank you. I believe we have come to an end of today's lecture. I'd like to take a moment to thank everybody for joining in, making this guest lecture as interactive as it was. The questions were really helpful to resolve some of the doubts of the participants. On behalf of Team CCRR, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude and thank Mr. Bheem Singh, sir, for taking out time from what we know is a very tight schedule 
and for sharing with us the practicalities that are not taught in law school and can only be only be learned through practical experience which sir has we look forward to having you again with us in the new future so thank you so much sir before we bid adieu i request if our participants can please fill out the form that is present in the chat box you can see the chat box there will be a form thank you everyone once again we'll be ending the meeting in 5 minutes so <clears throat> anybody else who want to ask any question actually those who are practicing uh, they have different type of questions those who are in law school but have some uh, queries not a question so if anybody is having some questions uh, what do you think that can be answered in the short span of 5 five, 5 uh, five minutes as so gautam has just told that we have 5 minutes uh, we can, i can answer i will try to answer if i can so i am also not that much aware i am also learning uh one mr lachman singh gautam ha sir how arbitration is doing when we compare it to the traditional court trial system how adr can make up to the sorry and the, what is the last line oh traditional trial system sir okay uh mr lachman uh, see uh, the good point is that the government is trying arbitration ek aisi cheez hai jis pe kabhi kabhi dhyan gaya nahi हमें पता ही नहीं था क्या होता हम लोग तो सीधे कोर्ट जाते थे वकील साहब से मिलते थे वो काम कराते थे अपना है ना बट नाउ अ गुड पॉइंट दैट गवर्नमेंट हैज कम टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट कोर्ट आर नॉट डीलिंग द इशू एक्चुअली इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ कमर्शियल मैटर्स इफिशियंटली सो व्हाट द व्हाट इज द सॉल्यूशन दे कम अप विद द आर्बिट्रेशन सो दे हैव जस्ट फोकसिंग ऑन आर्बिट्रेशन आप now you are asking the difference the difference is very open from the from the definition aap padho na private dispute resolution you need not to feel the pressure of court proceeding if you are, you are not coming to the date that doesn't mean that you are getting some contempt you can say anything so there are some informal ways of saying things aap keh sakte ho aap kara sakte ho see the act itself said the cpc crpc and udens uh, i mean cpc is not a case but uh, there are no foundation to follow the procedural law to kai baar aise bhi hota hai ki aapko zarurat bhi nahi padti hai aap claim file karte ho samne se statement defense aata hai admission denial hota hai aur usse bhi award aate hain theek hai but if you are in the court proceeding you will have to face the system so this is all that i mean this is the difference that have been brought by arbitration right sir um i believe that will be the end of the question i round and i want to sincerely thank you sir for the knowledge bag you shared with us and made us aware with the current trends of arbitration now and the resolution of the fees issue in the ad hoc arbitration it was wonderful session sir thank you so much for your presence i would ask everyone to leave the meeting now thank you so much have a great evening great thank you all of you for joining for listening me thank you now i'm disconnecting okay